Good afternoon. We are Shipaway, Financial Freedom Faster. Hi, my name is Hannah Wright. William Fulbert Hannah. And we are seeking to address the effect of compounding interest on student loans. The outstanding student loan interest that is currently being held by 45 million individuals across the U.S. is $1.56 trillion. The average amount of debt a student walks away from school with is $37,000. The average monthly payment of a student loan is $406. And out of the 45 million individuals, there are 5.1 million who are 90 days delinquent or in default on their student loans. The problem here is that the interest, the students and alumni are paying too much interest on their loans. Now for a look at our opportunity. We are we are seeking to address the target market of recent college graduates, in particular those in that six month grace period. The time is now. As the cost of education continues to rise, so does the student loan debt. And it is projected to reach $2 trillion as soon as 2025, which is a 33% increase in just six years. And in Massachusetts alone, there are 855,000 student loan borrowers who combined owe $33 billion. Now, we're going to shift our focus away and focus on our community here at UMass Lowell. We conducted a survey where we have an updated number of 545 respondents. Out of those respondents, 65% said they have not started paying down their student loans. 53% said that they are stressed or worried about their student loans. And 48% said that they are thinking about their loans all the time. The current marketplace is primarily filled with Gratify and Changia. There are others, but these are our, the two largest. Uh, Gratify offers student loan assistance uh, with employers as a fringe benefit, and then also uh, a variety of refinancing options. Uh, they have a variety of fee structures and desktop applications, so it's a limited user interface. Changed offers uh, a different degree of flexibility, but still has some restrictions in terms of a $5 minimum mandatory payment. And then it's working to converge its offerings to that of Gratify. That seems to be very popular. So there's uh, limited flexibility with the payments, and then there's also issues with the mobile application not being particularly intuitive and not offering uh, any education to users about student loans. The solution that we're seeking to bring to the market is a one dollar subscription fee per month back compounding interest with flexible and affordable micropayments, giving users the ability to be in the driver's seat to control their loans to see what a dollar today does for a dollar tomorrow. Uh, taking the monthly balloon payment of $406 and breaking that into month or daily payments would be just over $14 a day, and that comes out to a much more manageable and uh, financially effective instrument to pay down our student debt and can lead to savings of up to 4% over the life of your Decreasing the outstanding balance faster and giving individuals their financial freedom. Our platform seeks to connect individuals to both the financial institutions that hold their money and the student loan providers that are holding their uh, debt. By placing them in the middle, they are given uh, an opportunity to have greater control over their financial future. The resources that we're seeking to get through the different speaker competitions, $15,000 in initial funding to further develop and test our minimum viable product, which has been done in BBA, which is not scalable for. Out of that, $9,500 would be used for conferences and developing our understanding further. Uh, about a third of it would be used for Amazon Web Services to run uh, one server to process transactions and, and an alpha test. And then uh, about $1,000 of it would be used for application placement on iOS and Android web apps uh, and then uh, security software to make sure that we're updated to your standards. Thank you. Does that have any questions? Just on the, the payment processing, um, have you taken into account what the cost it would be on a daily basis to debit at fourteen dollars? Uh, we do not have the numbers on a daily basis, but we have done what it is effectively like a trial run with yeah. our own accounts on what it takes, and the main cost 
uh, once it's fully developed and scalable for that, uh, it's just one server. So the reason that you schedule your transactions, like when you're paying down your credit card, it, it schedules it for the next day, and that's because there's a queue and a backlog with that. So the main issue comes in with just having a server available to process that payment. There's, there's probably also an ACH, or a clearinghouse cost associated with it, just to keep the solutions to go through your business model. Mm -hmm. That's probably about eight cents a day for each debit that's going to come out of that account. Okay. So when you create a financial model, you may want to look into that a little bit because that's going to be another, it's not a lot of money, but it's $2.40 per month that they need to yeah. multiply over 12 months and then just mathematically could have some impact in regards to the interest savings you're trying to do on the other end. So, um, my question is more, more about what, what are you really trying to do? Are you trying to kind of force people into a drumbeat of, of auto payment so that they don't get behind? Or are you trying, are you really trying to save that 4% over the life of the money? Uh, it's really about savings on the interest. Uh, so, when my loans come due in two months, I can either choose to pay $435 a month or uh, an extended deferred method, which would be half that payment, but for 25 years. And so, in an effort to just decrease the amount of interest that is going nowhere, because it's only tax deductible up to $2,500, there's, there's no benefit in paying any more interest than there would be otherwise. And so this is a problem that anyone who has student loans has. Just, it's a misallocation of our money, and this is an application that would allow people to decrease where their money's going towards their student loans. So it seems to me that there's, um, uh, that if students have the money to go pay their loans, mm -hmm. and they're inclined to pay, that they may pay. I mean, 4% is about 1500 bucks over the course of the, over the life of well, many years, right? Um, but what, what's the main reason students get into default? Is it because they, the $400 a month nut is just intimidating and they don't want to do it? Or because they don't have the cash? Or what puts them into, into default? Because you're trying to prevent default, right? We're, we're not focusing on default. I mean, that's it would be better, and I'm sure it could be avoided by some okay. of that 5.1 million. By no means, I think all of that 5.1 million would be able to not be in default with the use of this application. Uh, and for actually addressing your question, would you be able to repeat the core of it, please? Um, I'm just, just trying to figure out if you're if if this if the goal of this whole thing is is to save that $1,500 of the life of the loan, or if it's to incur, to, to relieve the stress on people, people who are stressed about their student loans, um, they're probably not stressed about a small percentage of it, they're probably more stressed about, oh my God, I got to pay 400 bucks this month, and I've got to eat, and I got a car, and I got an apartment, and how am I going to go pay that? And um, if you're trying to make it easier for them, or less stressful, that's one thing. If the goal is strictly to, um, for the financially savvy person to save that 4% and, and use that to buy a latte every other day, that's cool too. That's, you know, the focus sure. is not preventing the fault overall. Okay. I think that would be uh, an externality okay. of it. Okay. How do you plan on testing this? You talked about earlier as well. What steps are you to test? The steps that we would take to test would be friends and family where we both know a ton of other uh, graduates who have student loans that they're paying. So beyond testing it with our VBA model uh, that is, is just Excel and it's connected to my bank account and actually works for processing, uh, it would be more about getting uh, something put together that would actually be uh, secure because the VBA program, the way that works, it, the password and username are hard coded into the, the code for it. So that's that's not very secure, and that's certainly not to industry standard. So it would be using, uh, developing a model that does like web scraping. If you're familiar with Mint, how you can use Mint to all of those, and then use a similar method as that, and then just have the, the back end that facilitates logging in, and then making that name. 
And do you see this as just U.S.-based colleges with students and schools, or do you see this being more global um, solutions? Um, I think the getting into the student loan space is reasonable for our demographic, uh, but the application of more frequent payments on outstanding debt is much more broad than that, so it would have a global application. I'm sure you've all heard of splitting your mortgage into two payments rather than one, and you know sometimes you can do that and sometimes you can't based on any prepayment penalties you may incur. And so it would be finding out which service providers have repayment plans that are flexible enough to accommodate daily payment, or if not, at least more frequent payment, so that the accruing interest increases on any amount of outstanding debt. You can do it on your credit cards currently. I know Discover recently started doing the splitting up your monthly payment into two even monthly payments. So they're starting to realize that this is something that is attractive. And there's a market for that. So if I understand this correctly, the students are coming back, they're chipping away. So they really don't really know like, every other day, every day, can they can, they just vote it, and they say, you manage that account. Um, they keep, they have to keep track of like, any new thing that you said you could stretch this out to the junior seniors, right? So you're not paying for it before you came to something like that. You're paying it very, very small. So, so concerns about not meeting the minimum monthly payment? So the idea would be that there would be a variety of options. Uh, you would certainly be able, I mean, the goal of enrolling, so the, what's currently offered by student loan providers is that you can enroll in auto payment and you get a 0.25%, a quarter of a percent discount on the interest that's accruing. And then so making sure that the users of Chipaway are tapping into the uh, the benefits that are already there, such as making sure that you're meeting your minimum payments and then enrolling in auto payment, because I don't see why it wouldn't still qualify as auto payment if it was done through Chipaway. I can understand how the service provider would be like, oh no, that's not our auto payment, so you're not getting it. But in terms of offerings, like having, having students or graduates be able to see their monthly payments split up across 30 days, and seeing that it's fourteen dollars a day, and then make it be like, all right, I think I can do fifteen dollars a day, and then so it, we would work, hopefully, to not have people miss their minimum payments. I mean, that's a structure that could be built into it to have it like read an error, or but I mean, meeting the minimum payment. It's a tricky thing with finances because if they're not going to meet it, they probably wouldn't meet it otherwise. And so, at what point does we we wouldn't necessarily be targeting those that would have issues meeting the minimum payment? So you're breaking it down for them so that they can they can see it more clearer when yeah. money's going early, so that instead of waiting like to the you do get paid monthly. Yeah. Right, so if you go a monthly check for your work, that's dangerous because you, know, you just pay all the first week. You gotta have better budgeting skills for sure. So yeah. really kind of <laughs> they're, they're really paying on their own, but they're doing it in a more structured way that they can, they can manage it easily. Yeah. That's okay. Rather than more discipline. Yeah, for sure. Have you thought about partnering, say, with like a Starbucks company that's around every campus across the country and saying, hey, for a latte you sold, would you contribute any sense to a student loan debt? Not yet, but that is something we can definitely look into. I'd say we're still on the pretty preliminary aspects, but that would be a good idea to further look into. And how about the, so uh, you mentioned the eight cents per day cost of transaction. Um, have you assessed the cost of running and updating the reports and everything? Again, so that students can have the access to their GI Save $28 this month, that type of thing. If you're going to run daily or you're going to run monthly, how much money they saved and then what they're doing? Uh, it you would be. That cost? Uh, we haven't assessed the cost other than we know we need Amazon Web Services to have access to servers to actually process our information. Uh, in terms of 
being able to project. And so the idea with using the web scraper is we wouldn't necessarily be pulling their system numbers immediately. It would be sort of like projected. Like if you, I use Mint also, and I know sometimes the numbers aren't actually reflecting reality. It may be slow in updating on payment or something like that. Interest could have accrued. And so that's where we would be running something similar where it would just be projected. And I do not know the cost of running that report on a daily basis. I would imagine that one query would require one machine. And so that it, it's definitely costly to have 100,000 users seeking to request information on this. How about protection of information? That's the biggest concern because, uh, as we've already seen, you can do it in a variety of unsafe ways, but because it is financial information, there's pretty strict regulations that are good form to follow for this, and so we take that into account. I'm sorry that we have time's up for the question and answer sections. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Th